west, but now there's only two, this being one of them. And for £1.20, Greg here will hand pull you across, worth every penny. Situated in the West Midlands, landlocked Herefordshire borders the counties of Shropshire, Worcestershire and Gloucestershire, with Wales to the west. This landscape is scattered with sites that reflect centuries of border conflict between England and Wales, and Herefordshire's Golden Valley was regularly fought over by Welsh raiders, looking to bring down the fortified Norman castles. But evidence of human activity stretches back a lot further. Arthur's Stone is a Neolithic tomb which is over 5,000 years old. Today, Herefordshire is well known as a food-producing area thanks to its fertile soils. The county capital, the city of Hereford, is dominated by its cathedral and the pretty streets are lined with striking black and white houses. With the River Wye meandering through a county with one of the lowest population densities in the country, Herefordshire is as rural as it comes. £256,000 is the average price of a detached house here in Herefordshire. And that's almost exactly the same as the national figure. But believe you me, there is nothing average about this wonderful county. There are some pricey spots around the market towns like ross on wye or Ledbury. But one of the great advantages of Herefordshire is space, because it is one of the most sparsely populated counties in the UK. And let's find out whether space is one of the reasons why our buyers want to move here today. John and Joy live in this four-bedroom house in Bourneville, a suburb of Birmingham. But with Joy now retired and university professor John about to follow suit, it's time for a change. Other members of our family have already moved into the country. We're probably the only people left who live in a city. So we just want to move out, do something different and feel that it's a new part of our lives to start again. Since their student days, John and Joy have hopped from one city to another. We met at Birmingham University in 1971, both, both freshers. John was a chemistry student and I was a historian. We then moved to Southampton and on to Stockholm. The closest we got to the country was when I was working in Cambridge for a while, but even that was uh, quite close to the city. For the past 27 years, they've lived in the Birmingham home where they brought up their three children. But three years ago, tragedy hit the family when John and Joy's daughter, Vanessa, died unexpectedly. So leaving the family home behind with all its memories will be hard, even though they're drawn to the countryside. When we go on holidays, trips, we just love the serenity and the tranquility of the countryside. And you just feel you're in a different space. It's a spiritual feeling, looking out and seeing something that's natural rather than something that's built up. Herefordshire is the perfect county in which to indulge their passions. Herefordshire itself, the Welsh marches, a very mysterious area. There's so much history attached to that. There's lots and lots of archaeology, which I'm tremendously interested in. I love walking, so the idea of being outside with, with nature, with all the beauty around you, again with that tranquility, I think that's what does it for me. And with work no longer tying the couple to Birmingham, they're looking forward to spending more time with the family. The reason really that we are interested in Herefordshire is because it, it is, it will reduce our journey to see our son and grandchildren by approximately an hour, which will enable us actually to go and see them for the day. They have recently moved a little bit further away. I'm sure it's nothing to do with us, but <laughs> we, we feel that we need to move that bit closer now to see them on a more regular basis. John and Joy already have an offer on their home and know how much money they've got to play with. The budget for the move is £400,000 max. Although we're starting our property search in Herefordshire, John and Joy are open to living in the surrounding counties, as long as they're close to their son and grandchildren in Cardiff. I've come to meet them on Herefordshire soil to find out more about their ideal home. Welcome to Herefordshire. Thank you. Lovely weather we have, very nice setting. But we are going to go off on an odyssey, so are you ready to see some properties? We Definitely. certainly are. Very exciting. Thinking about the house, what, what is it that you're looking for in terms of the, the property itself? 
Well, we want somewhere that has some character, but by that we don't necessarily mean the oldest house. It could be modern, but still have character. How much space do you need for sort of people to come and stay, realistically? I think we probably do need two rooms for my oldest son's family and one room for my younger son at Christmas, particularly. So that would be four bedrooms in all. What are you looking for in your kitchen? Well, size, definitely. That's important. A fantastic view would be an extra bonus, a big bonus. So let's talk briefly about the garden. What sort of garden would you like? Well, I think I quite like wildish gardens. I like gardens that look after themselves a little bit, but I don't mind riding one of those little mini moors. Everybody so likes a mini moor. I, 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 they're such fun, aren't they? <laughs> That's the whole point of moving to the countryside, exactly. is to get one. <laughs> How good are you at sort of making decisions? Is it a sort of impulsive thing, or do you sort of use your head rather than your heart? We know what we want, obviously, yes. but the heart has to follow very yes. much so. And I think that feeling of passion about somewhere. Well, we've got three lovely properties lined up for you, and I hope that they're, well, I hope that you like them all, but um, do, do feel free to tell us what you like and what you don't like. Okay. So let's get started. For a maximum budget of £400,000, John and Joy want a house with character, but don't mind whether it's old or new. It must have four bedrooms to accommodate visiting family, a spacious kitchen and a garden with a view of the surrounding countryside. Location is also important as this move is about being closer to their grandchildren in South Wales. I'm hoping our buyers will be pleased with the selection of properties I'm going to show them and I'll be revealing the all-important price tag at the end of each house tour. And our mystery house will offer John and Joy the chance of a different life to the one they've planned. John, I hear that you're into indie music. Oh, absolutely. I say partly to Joy's chagrin, but uh, yeah, you don't mind too much, do you? I like some of it, and usually I tell him when I don't, and he turns it off. So John's going to be sort of like raving away in his room. What are you going to be doing, Joy? <laughs> oh, lots of things. I, I, I want to sort of join the community a little bit. I quite fancy trying things I've not done before. I might even join an Amdram society. Oh, yeah. For our first property, we're heading to Great Brampton Park, which is about seven miles from Hereford. The closest village for amenities is Madley, which has a range of shops and services, but also a 16th century coaching inn, a Norman church, and a quirky luxury hotel with its own art gallery. Just a mile down the road, surrounded by Herefordshire countryside, is our first house. OK, so it's a little disorientating, because clearly not all of this is up oh. for sale. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and this is uh, slightly different from what you asked for, but we, we couldn't resist showing you this property, because it's a beautiful, beautiful home. But as you can see, it is part of a complex. Mm. Yeah. So this used to be a cider farm, built probably around the late 19th century, 1870s, mm -hmm. and converted 10 years ago. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I like the idea in many ways because they're all fairly individual. Yeah, mm. and it gives a sense of a community, yeah. which is never a bad thing. Yeah. So it's certainly not yes. a deal breaker by any yeah. means. I mean, we might need to interview the neighbours. <laughs> one by one. <laughs> John and Joy seem open to the idea of living within a community, and this long barn conversion is one of 13 properties on the site. So come in and have a look at the. The kitchen with its very fine rafters. They oh, look yes. quite old, don't they? Yes, it's a bit of sort of agricultural archaeology. Though you don't have to dig much. Perfect. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> nice tall ceilings. Gives a great feeling of space. Mm. Yes. Very nice on first impressions. Yeah. And then come in here, I think this is a lovely... Well, this is sort of heart of the home, really. Oh, I like this. I love the floor. Mm. The floor and just the whole feel. Yes. Yes. And is that a wood-burning stove, I see? Yes, it is. A quite a modern one, sort of raised off the ground. But, Excellent. But um, it do, does give off quite a lot of heat. And what about the space? I mean, The space is good. The space is very good, actually. I mean, you could easily get our family into here with uh, no problem at all. And it's not just physical dimensions, it's that feel of space as well. Yes, and I think it's this room bright. definitely has it, yes, bright. Yes. OK, well, let's go and look at the sleeping quarters. So far, so good. 
and the ground floor living area also features a utility room and a family bathroom off the kitchen. There are four bedrooms in the property, three are on the ground floor. Of those, two are doubles and there's one single. But there's also a double bedroom upstairs with its own adjacent bathroom, perfect suite for guests. Let's hope the positivity continues in the master bedroom, which is on the ground floor. I think this is not much bigger than our bedroom at home, and one of the things I rather like the idea of is increasing the size of our bed. Well, you snuck that in, because you didn't mention that before. <laughs> 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 well, it's an interesting property, because obviously most of them are all on one level. Yeah. This one does have an ensuite shower room. Very nice. Ah, okay. oh, well, that is a plus. OK, well, let's go outside and let's talk about the price, because then you can okay. explore it properly. Okay. Thank you. I fear we may have hit a wall with the size of the master bedroom, but there's still the garden to see. It's all at the front of the property and includes this sunny patio seating area. But will it be up to size? Compact. Compact. Is that code for not big enough? I think it... I think, to be honest, it is. Mm. I have to be honest. And not simply not big enough, we do not have the views. Yes. That's for sure. That's true. And possibly we don't even have the privacy from the other properties. No. Well, it is all it is mm, much mm, more communal mm, mm, than, mm. Uh, than uh, private. What do you think it's on the market for? I would say about £320,000. Mm -hmm. I would say close, 330 330 Well, you are both in the right ballpark, but it's actually a little bit more expensive. It's mm. on the market for 350 OK. OK. Mm. You haven't seen the space upstairs, so have a look round inside and just sort of get the, the lay of the land. OK. OK. Then we'll meet out the front and then we'll push on. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it was always a bit of a gamble coming here because, really, the garden and the dimensions, but it's a beautiful property and it's a good starting point for our discussions and our adventures. Under budget at £350,000, our first house is a converted barn which was once part of a working cider farm. Renovated ten years ago, it retains much of the fabric of the original building. The accommodation features a kitchen, breakfast room and a spacious living room with vaulted ceiling. There are four bedrooms in total, including an upstairs guest bedroom with an ensuite. And as one of a number of properties on the former farm complex, you're living amongst a friendly community. It feels a little bit small, and I would be concerned about people banging their heads on these beams. Well, particularly our two tall sons. Yeah. I like the decor. I think they've got an amazing eye. This room in particular is absolutely beautiful. I like several things about the property, and perhaps one of the things a little bit of, uh, topped with joy is the kitchen. Um, I think that's a really open area. It breathes space. We could consider this house if it had some bigger rooms in terms of bed space. That would be good. It's ingenious what the owners have done with the space up there, but I think it's going to be too cramped for John and Joy because it's already feeling a bit squeezy here. All right, guys? Yes, all done. Very good. So pull the door. Let's head to property two. Right. Excellent. old Saxon city wall to meet an expert on urban archaeology, Nigel Baker. This is part of Hereford's Saxon defences. What you have is the Saxon town wall, as it was excavated 30, 40 years ago, whatever, uh, preserved for perpetuity. And you would have something like this circling the whole of all what, the way around. Hereford. All the way yeah. around. Some parts of the Saxon defences run right under the town centre, and they're mm. only ever found by excavation when you know new Anything. shops, new yes. buildings are put up. Yes. The city was declared an area of archaeological importance back in 1979, one of only half a dozen in the country, based purely on the quality and quantity of the Saxon discoveries. After the Saxons came the Normans. Uh, this is Hereford's modern commercial heart, as it were, and it's also the Norman marketplace, established in the 1070s, right outside the old Saxon town. 
So if you look at the row of shops behind me, that's where the Anglo-Saxon defences we've just come from looking at, mm. that's where they run. But we're standing looking at the old house, which was built by a butcher in 1621. Mm -hmm. And we had a row of shops here. This was known as the butcher's row, not just because there were butcher's shops, but because there was a shambles here. Yeah. And that oh. means that not only did they sell meat, but they actually slaughtered the cattle yes. really? right here yeah. in the street. It's a really, it really a nice building. Jacobean it's building. It's got the most building. wonderful carvings all yeah. over it. The brackets under the windows. Can I ask about what, to me, appears like bunches of grapes yes. hanging? Are, yeah. are they? Yes, they are. It was a fashionable ornament in Renaissance mm. decoration. You know, you are seeing here just little bits of neoclassical decoration oh, okay. coming into what is essentially a medieval, very English school of mm. timber-framed mm. architecture. As well as revealing Herefordshire's building heritage, Archaeologists have discovered a wealth of materials which piece together the story of the county. Many of these objects are housed in the city's own museum, and John and Joy are meeting collections officer Judy Stevenson and some of the area's earliest inhabitants. But I believe you're particularly interested in archaeology, am I right? Yes, so oh. I'm quite keen when we move possibly to volunteer and help out a little bit. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> and we have uh, quite a few volunteers who come yes. here and they might be reboxing things or doing inventories yes. and cataloguing, yes. that sort yes. of thing. Let me show you some examples of what some of the work they've done. These are examples of early people who lived in Herefordshire and there's some cave sites mm. um, which were occupied. Um, not only by humans, but also by animals at different times as well. I see hyenas' teeth. So there were... No, not hyenas yep, there here. There were hyenas were here in Herefordshire. Yep, that's right, that's wow. a hyena's tooth. Um, there's also rhino, rhino teeth. There was woolly rhino hair. Goodness me. And, and this is a woolly rhino bone as well, a part of a leg bone. It's almost impossible to imagine, really. It is, because it? now you just cannot imagine these no, wild animals. No. As well as prehistoric animal remains, the collection includes man-made objects found nearby, from Bronze Age tools to Roman measuring instruments. More than enough artefacts to keep Joy happy when she moves here. ...site, which is on the edge of the Forest of Dean. Although we've left Herefordshire, we're now even closer to John and Joy's family in Cardiff. The Forest of Dean is a unique place, one of the country's last surviving ancient woodlands, which has been shaped by coal mining, and I'm sure its history will interest our buyers. We're making a stop at Pan Todd Beacon, the highest point in the area, to take in the scenery. Well, look at the view. Oh, yes. Wow. That is a view, isn't it? So the Forest of Dean's a very interesting place. We're over in the border into Gloucestershire. Yes. It is the oldest national forest park, founded in 1938. But if you're born into the Forest of Dean, born within the Forest of Dean, then you have uh, mining rights. <laughs> and you're close to lots of things. So Gloucester's over there, so mm. Hereford's straight ahead, and then you've mm. got over there, you've got Abergavenny and mm. the hills there, and, yeah. the, and the Mulvans there on the, the, on the horizon. And it's got a lovely property. Follow me. Oh, OK. Oh. And that lovely property is just a short drive down from the beacon, in rolling countryside just outside the village of Ruadin Woodside. This is the property <laughs> I want to show you. Interesting. Oh, you wow. Taken aback. Yes. What are your thoughts from the outside? It's very cute, isn't it? It's very cute, unexpected and intrigued. Mm. I love the stone. I love the colour of the stone and the rocks and the, all the higgledy-piggledy sizes. Yep. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it's it? It's holding a lot of, of promise mm. at this Let's stage. see if the promise is fulfilled inside. <laughs> well. Built in the mid-19th century, our second property was at one time a schoolhouse, then a chapel, which fell into dereliction before the present owners converted it. Come on in. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, yeah, I agree. Mm. Yes. That's it's got a good feel. A very good feel. Yes, it has. Describe the feeling. What, what are you feeling? Warm and fuzzy. Yes. <laughs> In the moment. Yes, it's got lovely views from the windows. Now, this is the old part of the house. This would have oh, been okay. that went back to the 19th century. Yeah. Mm. But they put in this great set of wooden floor throughout. Yes. And a lot of the materials are local to the forest. 
Oh, well, that's, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I like that. And the fireplace is mm. quite stunning. Yes, mm. we'll see what comes next. Come into the kitchen. Oh, yes. Oh, mm. looks like a lovely oven there, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic range, that's for sure. Yes. Yeah, it's got a cottagey feel, but modern-ish at the same time. You've got the original yes, flags flag. here, mm. yes. which are worth a fortune. Is that right? <laughs> right. So you've got all the uh, handmade bespoke oak uh, mm. cupboards, and this is all local oak, hand-picked by, mm. by the present owner. And there is outside a sort of outbuilding again, like the last house, there's a small room with all the white goods. And oh, the right, and so oh, right. Yes, yeah, OK. Yes. Mm. It has a good feel. It does, yes, yes. It's very interesting. Yes. You said that word a lot. What does the word interesting mean for you two? It means I haven't quite made up my mind. Oh, very good. I'd love to see a bit more. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> Come with me. This is all the new bit. This is the extension. Sort of garden room or a sitting room. Yes. And that sort of entrance into the garden. I mean, it's you lovely with the trees parts. behind, yes, isn't it? it? Yes. Good. Well, so far not a grumble. Let's see what you think of upstairs. Upstairs there are three bedrooms, one less than our previous property, but they're all big enough for double beds. And there's a good-sized family bathroom. So come into the master bedroom. Well, this is lovely. Very spacious. The windows strike you straight away and are very pretty indeed. And, and size is good as well. Yes. Yes, it feels spacious, doesn't yes. it? Yes, yes. And you've got this very nice little sort of walk-in oh, yes. wardrobe. Oh, yes. And if you have a look in the bathroom, I'll often okay. show people the bathrooms, but this is a particularly good one. Oh. Oh, this is a lovely bathroom, isn't it? Look at the shower. Oh, now, yes. Yes. That's what you're I, after, it, isn't well, it? Well, this is much more the idea I had in mind. The drawback with this property is that it only has three bedrooms. Yes. Mm, okay. But let's have a look outside in the garden. As well as a double garage, the grounds include this large landscape terrace garden set into the hillside with a patio area with more flagstones, a vegetable patch and a pond. What are your first impressions coming out into the I think the house looks really sweet from this angle, actually. I mean, sometimes with extension, it looks like an add-on, a stick-on. But that is really working, isn't it? Yes. I think this garden has a real wow factor. You know, if it you brought has. people here, they'd be like, wow. Yeah, I'd yeah. agree with that. And so how much would you think it all costs? I would say probably about 360000 I was going higher, 385. OK, well, the truth is a little in between. Ah. It's on the market just a shade under 380. There we are. Both quite close. So yeah. it's, a, it's a fair package of, of land, well, you know, very is... nicely decorated mm. gardens. But there is space inside that you haven't quite uh, explored, so if you want to have a poodle mm -hmm. round inside, then that'll okay. be elephant. OK. Thank you. Yeah. On the market for just shy of £380,000, our second offering is still under John and Joy's top budget. It's a converted 19th century former schoolhouse, then chapel, retaining many of the original features, including stained glass windows. There's a large dining room and separate kitchen, and it has three double bedrooms. The rear garden is large and landscaped, with views of the surrounding countryside. I love that window because it's like the sun is shining in and illuminating the whole room. I think this house is intriguing. There's a lot about it I like. Um, the immediate outside, the back of it, the rear of it, I mean, the look of the house itself, the feel of the house, that garden is wow. Inside, um, I was warming to it more and more the more I looked around. I love the way the stairs branch, very characterful. And going into the master bedroom, yes, it, it, it really is stunning when you first walk into there. I think that the small rooms in the middle are very small and almost cupboard-like. It could be our home, but I think that we would have to have quite a, 
a, a change in our mindsets if it were to become our, our home. Anyway, that's our houses for the day. Let's go and rest and regroup. Good idea. <laughs> Pounds, we're trying to find John and Joy a home to retire to. Coming up, we get more than an interesting at the Mystery House. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? Oh, wow. And I sample an aperitif made from one of the county's homegrown fruits. That's nice. It is nice, isn't it? It's apple blossom time here in Herefordshire on our second day of property shopping, but I'm not sure that day one really yielded much fruit for John and Joy. I think Joy particularly is struggling with the compromises necessary to get what she wants. And of course the mystery house is really just upping the ante. We're, we're really putting a challenge in front of them because we could give them all the space that they want, but they're going to have to put some finishing touches on what's on offer. You know, of course, that the mystery house is always quite challenging. What do you think the challenge might be? Well, there seems to be a range of options that have certainly gone through our heads. I wonder if we're talking ultra-modern? Yeah, I mean, we've already said that we don't want a project. So... P possibly I it's hope a project. But it isn't too much of a project, if any. We're crossing back over the border into Herefordshire to find our mystery house and travelling to the village of Blakemere at the foot of the Black Mountains. It's ten miles from the historic market town of Hay on Wye, which is famous for its second-hand bookshops and annual literary festival. Hay is naturally popular with tourists, and that's one of the things I want John and Joy to bear in mind when I show them today's mystery house as I hope it will challenge our retirees to consider a new business opportunity here in the country. A 20-minute drive from Hay on Wye, and we're here. This is a mystery and a half, this house. You speculated that it might be a modern, architecturally designed property. Anything but. It's, but. Not. <laughs> yes, it's not. It's a very old property. The oldest property we've shown you it goes back to the 1640s, wow. and it was a cider house, like a pub. What are your first thoughts? That it's old. <laughs> it certainly has got character in yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Joy, you're, I can see that you're, you're yeah. thinking deeply. <laughs> I'm being Yorkshire. Clever. <laughs> 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 well, I'm actually not going to show you the house straight away because, first of all, I'd like you to point out the beautiful garden. Mm. Oh, I is. tell you what, I love that, bu that bush there. I'm not sure what it is. It's a Chinese tree peony. You've got a fantastic mm, yes. magnolia. Oh, oh, yeah, I love magnolias. magnolias. Yes, There's some yes. beautiful trees planted in the garden, oh, and you have an acre of garden. Goodness now, me. that's interesting. Mm, mm. But the thing that makes this a mystery is not that, but through here. Our mystery public house comes with an outbuilding, but it's one with a few strings attached. Oh! <laughs> Something Ooh. is under construction. <laughs> Something is under construction. My goodness. Now, this wow. makes this property very unique, because bearing in mind we're 10 miles away from Hay, mm. one of the most popular destinations. We love mm. it. But actually, what you have here is a really substantial second property in the grounds of your house, mm. with access from the road, and planning for a holiday let. Basically, it's being sold as the sort of the planned shell yeah. for a property that you would complete. Mm. Mm. <laughs> So when you said you don't like to do DIY, <laughs> this is the challenge. Badum. Massive challenge. Well, that's, that is the mystery. It certainly is. It is a mystery. Well, yes. Let's go, should we go and look at the main house? Yes, please. Let's do that. Mm. The current owners of the property believe that this half-built three-bedroom holiday let could make £500 a week at full capacity. But John and Joy are after a house, and they need to fall in love with that before they can consider the business potential of our mystery property. And there may be some work to do there too. Okay, so this is this is the old kitchen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bear in mind this is an old cottage, yes. and it's sort of you know has been kept sort of as it was. Yes. So you've got the lovely black and white beams, which are 
gorgeous, I have to say. I do like them. And good head height. But I think this wouldn't be the room where you'd want the kitchen. Ah, that's interesting. Follow me. This room, however... Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is, yes, this is lovely, yes. My first thought was, you know, the, this would be a lovely kitchen dining room. Yeah. I agree with you, yes. Actually, that could then be your utility room. Yes. yes. You could yes. put a big range here. Yes. And some, mm. you know, for sort of sim sympathetic units. That yes. could be rather nice, yes. It would, wouldn't it? Mm. So the thing to remember of this property, however, is that it's a Grade two listed building. Ah. So right. that limits yeah. what one can do. It limits what you can do, but it doesn't mean you can't do anything. It's a great area. I mean, the, the actual size of the room is, is perfect, really, isn't it? There are two further reception rooms downstairs, a cosy living area with a log burner and a breakfast room off the current kitchen. There are three good-sized bedrooms upstairs, all in the eaves with exposed timbers, and they all share a large family bathroom. This is the master bedroom, a sort of classic cottage upstairs. Oh, it is, yes. Oh, yes, beams are plenty. Like it. Yeah, first yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like a, a lovely little house in oh, the it sense does. that it's got a good atmosphere, oh, the hasn't house. it? Yeah, and, and this room, definitely. Yes. Well, you said you wanted something different from what you've got. Well, well this, it couldn't this be more fits different, the bill. could it, really? <laughs> Our buyers have already said they liked the front garden, but there's so much more around the back, including a substantial lawn area, a summer house and a large veggie patch, one acre of land in total. But there's still the price of the whole package to consider. What do you think it's going to cost? Because clearly you're going to have to spend some money oh. on it. Well, yeah, this is our big concern, really, I think. Well, I, I just almost finding it impossible, but I know I have to give a figure. For it to come into budget with the sort of work we would need to do, I think the bottom line price would need to be 320 dollars 30 mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I probably think... I would go probably with 300,000, and I know I may be a bit low, but that would give us a clear 100,000 to do the garden, the barn and everything else. Mm. This is actually, I'm afraid, <laughs> quite high in your budget, actually over your budget. It's on at 410. Mm. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not surprised at that figure. Yeah, I'm yeah, really yeah, not. Yeah. I suppose mm. you have to factor in that it could be potentially a sort of £15,000 a year income stream. Oh, no, that's right. Well, why don't you have a wander around? Because yes. it, is, it is a sort of you know, challenging yeah. proposition. It's certainly have yeah. a look upstairs and uh, I'll see you at the front. OK. okay. At £410,000, our mystery house is slightly more than what John and Joy originally wanted to spend, but does offer them a potential income. It's a Grade two listed former cider house, parts of which date back nearly 400 years. The accommodation includes three large reception rooms and three double bedrooms. It's set in one acre of gardens and comes with a half-finished holiday let, offering business potential in the future. Very tempting. I, I sort of fallen in love with it, I suppose. It's the more I think about it, the, the more I would love to be able to buy it. The barn was, was a huge surprise, but already, you know, within seconds, the old brain box was starting to tick and think through, well, what could this mean? How could we do it? You know, it would bring about the change of life and the lifestyle that we're really after. I love the story of this house. The fact that it was a, a cider house and that people came here probably to enjoy themselves and have, have a lovely time. And I think you can actually feel that within the house. I, I can see all the benefits of this, but I can also see potential stress as well. And I'm not sure that that was what we were after. OK, guys, that's us done. All properties seen. If you head to the car, I'll catch up with you in just a second. OK. Of course, we've been looking at properties through the lens of Joy and John's budget, but here in Herefordshire, your money can go in either direction, cheaper or more expensive, and look what you can buy. For offers around £250,000, how about this traditional red-brick Herefordshire cottage in the village of Portway? 
It's a detached property which offers four bedrooms, as well as the sitting room with a brick fireplace and exposed beams, and a long galley-type kitchen. For a little bit more, there's this four-bedroom property in the village of Broadoak, which is on the market for £350,000. The accommodation here includes this sitting room with tiled fireplace and wood-burning stove and a spacious kitchen diner. The house also comes with a small paddock and stable and views of the surrounding countryside. Further up the price scale, the £650,000 could get you this black-and-white detached property and adjoining barn in Madley. It has five bedrooms, including this master with a vaulted ceiling, and a large sitting room with an impressive Inglenook fireplace. In these tough economic times, Herefordshire farmers are diversifying, and some are using the black current to make something a little more potent. I've come to meet one of those entrepreneurs, Joe Hilditch. Welcome. Hello. So this is your family black currant farm? Yeah. How long has it been in the family? Four generations. Ah, oh, it's quite an impressive field. Is this the only one, or did you have No, many? this is about 25 acres, and we've got about 125 acres. The soil suits it, the weather suits it, and the way the land lies, the frost runs away oh. down the hills. Obviously, we're a bit early in the year, because these are clearly... Are these just flowering? Well, these or? are in full flower, oh. and this is really good flower. I mean, they're, they're plastered with flour, but obviously they've got to be pollinated and set. Do you suffer from the lack of bees and much talked about? Uh, lack of bees? Yes, but we've planted a lot of margins around the field to encourage bees. So bee around friendly. every field, we've got two metres of margin that is unmown, oh. so that the wildflowers can grow up in it. So how many tonnes of currants do you pr produce? Depending on the season, something between 300 and 350 tonnes. We do keep a bit back for ourselves because we've diversified into making our own cassis. Cassis originates from France, where the black currant liqueur is mixed with wine to make the cocktail kia, or champagne to make kia royale. Jo first came up with the idea of producing it herself after trying the drink when she was 18 on a French exchange programme. So this is the bottling room. Oh, it's very petite. Hello. And this Hello. is James, the juice master, James Moss. So, James, what's the process? I mean, what's the sort of... How do you make it from the... Well, when, once we've got the juice back from the press, we just ferment it with a champagne yeast and British sugar. That's it. You use a champagne yeast because you get a higher alcohol yield over a time. And are you the only uh, cassis producer in Britain? There are other people who make black currant liqueurs, but I think we're the only ones who make something that is actually marketed to be drank with champagne or used as they use cassis in France. Before being bottled, the juice stays in the barrels for up to six months until it reaches an alcohol level similar to wine. And then it's ready to taste. Well, here's to your alcoholic fruit empire. Mmm. That's nice. Which is nice, isn't it? It's good to see that diversification here, at least, is paying off. But now it's time to find out if our house search has paid off and whether John and Joy are ready to embrace the move from the family home. Usually at this point, I have a pretty clear idea about which properties you don't like. I have to say, with you two, I have a slightly sinking feeling that you might not like any of them. Is that, is that fair? I think I can speak for both of us for once in saying that we both love the third property. Well, there's a turn up for the books. The house proved a bit of a surprise because as we were standing outside the front door, I thought, this is going to be so small. But it actually turned out to be bigger than I'd thought. The views from there were absolutely tremendous. How lovely to live at the foot of the Black Mountains. Now, what's happening next? Because, obviously, your house is pretty much sold. We Seems hope to so. be. That's yes. right. Close Just... to exchanging contracts. I, I think we are going to think further about that third one. I mean, it has potential. It's a lo it would be a lot of challenges and ones that we need a bit of time to get our heads around. Do you feel that actually you're... you want to leave Bourneville? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's more than just a normal move. For us, Bourneville meant a part of our lives when we had our family. 
We haven't got all our family now, and we need to move. But at the same time, we would be very sad. So yes. leaving memories behind is a double-edged sword. It is. Very much it's so. very much a double-edged sword. We're only going to do this once, I think, so we've got to get it right now. Hmm. Well, it feels like we've given you a little shove. Definitely. I think so. Towards the country and that... Yes. I hope the rest of the journey goes very smoothly. Thank you, Thank Alistair. you. It's been a really interesting show because, of course, John and Joy are very excited about moving to the countryside, but I also sense there's great tenderness for the family home they're leaving behind in Birmingham. So I hope that we have ignited their joy for the beauties of Herefordshire, and I hope that you join us next time for more Escape to the Country. John and Joy were very tempted by our mystery house and all that it offered. However, after careful consideration, they decided they didn't want to take on the holiday let. They've since moved into rented accommodation in Herefordshire and are continuing their search. And if you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, England, or even further afield to the continent and need our help, then please apply online at bbc.co.uk 